It's our first public land hunt. Yep. State, Texas state land hunt. And it's raining like... And we're on I-35, just south of Waco. Going a whopping zero MPH. Yep. It's raining like hell. And, uh... We were late. We took forever to get our bags. Our everything packed. That's true. But when you... Shut up. We had fun. Um, last night in the, well, this thing, the Austin Hunting Zone Tour. He didn't tour. show them, by the way. He went, like, the house was all like, Well, they can see it. Right now. That. And that. Yeah, this. Austin that. Hunting Film Tour. Look them up. I guess they do it in a bunch of towns. I don't know what causes the other towns benefit. It seems localized, like this one benefited two Austin-based charities. Yeah. Uh, the Kids Outdoor Zone and the Warrior Operation something. Not Wounded Warrior. It's about soldiers with PTSD. Or PTSD. PTSD and benefiting them. And the Rocky Mountain Milk Foundation, they're awesome. Yeah. You know, I joined that Randy Newberg's podcast talking to join the Rocky Mountain no, Elk no, Foundation. Yep. So we'll see if Randy was lying. I'm going to bet he was. He seems like a pretty stand-up dude. They gave us knives. <laughs> well, they gave us a knife. Yeah. The actual Turkey Federation's cool, too. They're nice people. Yeah. They gave me a knife. Yeah, you got a knife for them, too. Um, so, part of this, Tristan, so, okay, let's start here. I'm, I'm hoping the rain, that y'all can hear me and Tristan over the rain. It's yeah. like, they're calling it a hundred year storm in Austin. I don't know, I guess that means Patrick Swayze is supposed to surf or some shit. Anyways, we don't even get that reference. We've never no, seen no. Point Break. Very good movie. Um, so I'm thinking on, we're gonna, this will be the, as far as the plan sits right now, this episode will be the first podcast, uh, video cast, whatever the fuck, um, for this new thing I'm gonna Your sister wouldn't love it. Yes, she would. Um, but so here's the thing. What my original intention was that I would get you up early as shit this morning. I would surprise you that you weren't going to school. I would have everything packed. And we'd go. And there wouldn't be rain destroying my mic levels. We're sorry, and by we, the way. Uh, and we would record our first podcast and go to our hunt and we'd have elements of the video that were from during and after the hunt but today obviously with the rain and us driving late that part got screwed up another part that you don't know about is that we're not going to the place that you drew tags for. I got an email Tuesday saying that the Gus Engling hunt was canceled because they got 22 inches of rain last week. And so I called, I like looked on the list of which state lands were having hunts this week. And I called the, there was only two. I, tra- I had two boys that I ran down. My first instinct was to say, okay, well maybe we won't hunt this weekend. 
but you drew tags to the James Daughtry hunt two weekends from now. So I was like, oh, well, let's go camp there and scout. So I called those guys, uh, the game wardens down there, and they're like, ah, it's not allowed. We don't allow camping when it's not a hunt going on. And there was not a hunt going on this weekend. Uh, and I told the guy what the deal was. And he's like, well, just, uh, and I told him my idea about calling other places. And he's like, yeah, just call around and see what's up. But it was pretty sweet. You know, it's like the gruff, uh, you know, game warden type dude. Uh, I told him about your hunt getting canceled. The exact words out of his mouth with zero irony were, oh, poor baby. Like, he just had nothing but sympathy for you because he knew... He knows how much a kid looks forward to something like this. And uh, so, there we are. But then, I call, so I call, I look, and there's two. They were also in East Texas. The Gus Engling Hunt, for those that don't know, is in East Texas. The other two. Also in East Texas, so I'm thinking, uh, maybe they all got rained out. Maybe they all got messed up. So I called, there's one called Old Sabine Bottom. Sabine, S-A-B-I-N-E. Yeah. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong because of my allergy. Uh, Old Sabine Bottom. Wildlife Management Area. Didn't get an answer. And then I called the other one that's further away. And the other one is called White Oak Creek Wildlife Management Area. And uh, uh, the guy at White Oak Creek answered, he was extremely nice. And he thought uh, it was like a really good idea for something for us to do. He said they everything they can to try to get everybody on, all the standby hunters and everything. I talked to the old Sabine pass guys later and they called me back and they said uh, they only have a couple of standby slots open. So we're driving about an hour further than old Sabine Pass to go to the White Oak Creek and it's uh, I don't, I don't know if it actually counts as being in a town, but it, it's kind of, the two towns it's closest to are Omaha, Texas, and Naples, Texas. I didn't know either of those towns existed. But, so that's where we're headed. Uh, I'm going to move the mic. I hope it doesn't make any horrible noise. That's another thing I didn't get done this week is I wanted to build a mount for the mic that could like hold under here. Because that uh, female part of that hardware takes a regular quarter inch screw just like our tripods. So we've just been going slowly down, uh, well, so we waited, I wanted to be gone by like 8 o'clock this morning, it was about 10 o'clock by the time we got done packing, because it ended up being a lot more of a hassle than I thought it was going to be, especially with, and the rain didn't help, what do we, it actually turned to get stuff in the trunk. Yeah. Yeah, I blame you. I'm oh sure God. it's your fault somehow. You're always blaming. And now we are, but now I called. I haven't been able to get a hold of White Oak Creek today to make sure the hunt wasn't, that that hunt wasn't canceled because they're about to get hammered with rain. They probably already are right now. Let's three 
three hours ago when I was like the radar. But I did call Old Sabine Bottom, and I keep wanting to say Old Sabine Pass. Old Sabine Bottom, I called them, and they said the White Oak hunt was still going. Uh, so that's the information we're going on right now. Hopefully we don't show up and there ain't nothing to hunt. Yeah. I don't know. Because it's... According to Apple Maps, with regular traffic, regular weather, White Oak Creek is five hours from our driveway. Yeah, but it's going to take more like... Yeah. Cause, yeah, exactly. Because we're going like... 10 miles an hour right now is hauling ass compared to the average. We just stopped at Bucky's, which according to a lot of people is a Texas tradition. I lived in Texas my whole life, I never heard of them until a few years ago. So I don't know, I know they're really expensive. Yeah, that's true. So I'm saying that's a rumor they started. And we're about to try some of their... We're not going to try that. Okay. Because uh, uh, we're going to do that in the blind. Okay. That's, uh, we got that and that cheese for when we're sitting in the blind. Okay. The red, I read on some blogs about what kind of cheese is best without having to get into like Velveeta or something that's like plastic. And they're saying cheddar is one of the one of like three or five options that I kept seeing listed. Uh, I'm pretty they, sure that we're next to a semi that says East Squirrelly. Says what? East Squirrelly. East Squirrelly? Yeah. That's a good name. Oh, it's, yeah, I think that's a freight pony. You score it. <laughs> I'm going to go on a limb and assume that that's not anywhere here. Oh, Esquivel. That is a, that's like a mom and pop freight pony. That's probably the name of the dude sitting in the cab. Esquivel. I'm just going to say you score it. Yeah, I don't give a shit. We'll probably never meet that guy. If we do and he's mad though, I'm gonna throw it all on you. I'm good with that. So, originally I think your hunt was gonna be the Gus Engling hunt was for. I keep saying Ingerling. I keep wanting to put. Engling. Engling. Yeah, I keep wanting to put an R in there. Yeah. It looks like there should be an R in there, but whatever. Yeah. Um, By the way, it feels like Mopac. <laughs> it does feel like Mopac. Um, I don't know. This shit's crazy. Yeah, we woke up. What they said, uh, parts of South Austin got 16 inches of rain. Yeah. And settled like four hours or something. Yeah. So it's just... It's, there are parts of Austin flooded right now that hasn't flooded. They're saying a century. Who knows? Some I, of the areas around us are swimming pools. Like, not literally, but... No, I know what you're saying. Yeah. It's just up. Yeah. Uh, so, here, let us try to call the WMA again.
um, I had talked to somebody there like Tuesday about, about bringing my kid up to hunt this weekend. Right. And I was, uh, with all the rain and everything, I was wanting to make sure that the hunt's actually still going to happen. We're looking to get two or three inches, I think they're saying. Um, the river and the creek aren't out of their bank. Uh, they probably won't be even if, if they're going to be, it'll be Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we're down to about 10 kids that are signed up to draw them now. We've had several cancels that are traveling from a long ways away. Uh, so we'll still have standby positions and uh, the hunt kills. It should proceed as normal. If, at the very least, if it rains too much Saturday for folks, uh, it doesn't hurt the deer hunting at all. Uh, but if it rains too much, Sunday's supposed to be nice, so it, it's up to y'all. All right, well, we're, um, we were already headed that way, and I just wanted to call before it, well, we're sitting in, on I-35 in, uh, parking lot traffic. <laughs> um, so if we, um, because my plan was to get there tonight and hunt, and, uh, sorry, in camp. Right. Um, so if we get there, and, uh, I guess y'all take off around 5, right? Yeah, but the campground stays open. There's a, there'll be a black top road right here by our office. Uh, there's a gate on it, but it stays open. Just, just pull to the back of it. Um, you can pull out in the grass if you don't think you get stuck around the... There'll be a pole barn in the back. You'll, you'll see it. And then there's a large paved parking lot right there next to it. You can park, park me to one of them. And that's on the north side of the road or south side of the road? to be on the north side of Highway 77. Okay, that's what I thought. It was uh, the, depending on which Google map I was looking at, which it was hard to tell. Right, yeah, I think Google doesn't know where we are. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if you'll turn off the highway, off the Interstate 30 on the 259, you'll travel south about five miles or so and you'll run into Highway 77. It only goes one direction there. Uh, anyway, head down, head east down 77 and uh, we'll be about a mile down the hill. Be a tin building surrounded by tin link fence. Uh, there'll be a black top road right before you get to it. That'll be it. Alright, sir. We will be there in our time. One thing I will advise you is that the um, area kind of behind the pole barn in between there and the tree line is kind of a low spot and there's a large creek that runs through the area. If it, if it really rains a bunch tonight, that could get up in the campground. Uh, so if you're gonna if you're gonna pull a camper or tent or whatever you're doing, uh, I'd, I'd stay over close to the road or in the parking lot itself. Okay. It's not gonna get so deep that it's gonna hurt anything, but uh, I've, I've I've seen it get a foot or so deep back there behind that building. Oh, I got you. I got you. All right. I appreciate it, sir. All right. All right. See you in the morning. All right. <laughs> Bye. I was going to say, you know, just like that. Uh, you was going to say what? Oh, I was going to say, you know, just sit in the truck. Well, I mean, shit, the way this uh, traffic's going, um, I'm going to try to call Adam. Well, we're still in a parking lot, and... Uh, Squirrel is back. Squirrel. Squirrel. Secret squirrel. Senior squirrel. Secret. Secret. You, squirrel. Don't even, you, ain't even, you don't even know Secret Squirrel. It's probably on Boomerang. You used to watch Boomerang. Is I know that? what Secret Squirrel is. You know what Secret Squirrel is? Alright. Now that's older than me. Wow. Must be old, I think really. that's yeah, exactly. I think that's from when like Dad and uh, Opie were kids. Wow. I want to say teenager. Uh, Sixty. Well, if it was early sixties. It would have been when they're your age. I don't know. So, I have to look that up on the entry nets. So, do we? Hopefully, we get sponsors soon. Oh, well, I don't know about soon. We've got to build a product that they, that's worth showing them first. Uh, i got to see if people are interested in hearing two idiots like us talk. In yeah. the microphone while we're sitting in a truck. Yep. Uh, I did take video 
Uh, tried to. I don't know what it'll look like with my phone of the traffic. So, in theory, I can cut that in to the video version of this. Okay. But, yeah. Alright, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. We're next to a green semi. Uh, on the road. Going, uh, bell. Let's see, we're, oh, we're up to 25 mile an hour, son. Wow. Oh, it's a new um, record. What the crap? Oh, people are exiting. There's a school bus we ahead. We are at Bruce Fletty. You know how I know? What? That tower. That's the local NBC affiliates backyard tower. There are transmitter, big transmitter towers out that way, but you can't see it because of the clouds. So. Stories! I don't have any stories because I'm young and stupid. He has stories. Let's tell us stories. I can tell you about our the tower at the TV station I used to work at. Where, tell them. Well, we had a couple of good ones, a couple, one really bad one. Tell the bad one. One scary one. Um, well, the bad one, I don't know how much I'm supposed to talk. I don't really know if I know enough about the specifics i just know uh so we're uh coming up on bruce Folletti, which is just south of waco and many years ago many let's see you were born i think i didn't know you then yeah i was a little can't remember exactly then. what year it was it may have been the year you were born. Uh, so, I'm pointed north. The, this camera y'all are watching is pointed south. So, right directly to the west of us is Fort Hood. The biggest army base in North America, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, big. Right. And... Up close to where we're driving to is Texarkana. Guys in a Black Hawk were headed from Fort Hood to Texarkana. And our, you know, those flashing lights. I don't know why I keep looking at the camera. I keep worried it's going to die. The towers, radio towers. Uh, yeah, the transmitter towers. It's, well, those are for aircraft right yeah thing is when you have even we had all of them went out because of a weird massive failure and we couldn't get our technician because i think it was like right after katrina and so he was always somewhere on the gulf coast working on towers it was just really hard to get him and so we just hadn't gotten to able to fix our lights yet. We were on the list, but we weren't priority one. And, but that isn't, that stuff like that happens all the time, right? So what you do, when you have even a light out, and especially when you have all your lights out, is you call, uh, you'll have a designated, like we call the, we were supposed to call the, airport in McGregor, Texas. And uh, you would call them, identify who you were, say I got tower, I got lights out on the tower, and they would tell everybody in the area, okay, well that's restricted airspace. Well, and just for safety, you say don't fly there because you may not, you're not going to have full visibility of the tower. Well, I get to work, and we had done that. Like, we had called, done everything you're supposed to do. And I got to, I can't remember what day of the week it was. I don't want to say it was Monday, but I may be lying. Uh, 
and we're off the air. And back then, like, it was an old analog system that nobody wanted to pay to fix because everybody figured the digital changeover was coming. And uh, so it went, we went off the air all the time. So I walked in and I was like, oh, we're up there, that's weird. Uh, and walked into engineering where I work and it's either Brian or Jeff, not that any of y'all, not that you have any idea who I'm talking about. Friends. Uh, they, I said, hey, y'all know we're, we're up there, right? And they looked at me like I was an idiot. And said, oh, you don't know what's going on. I went, no. And what had happened was, eight guys in Blackhawk hauling ass from Fort Hood to Texarkana fly through restricted airspace. And do you know what a guy wire is? Like, they didn't hit our tower. They hit the guy wire which when you have a big tower like that, it goes straight up. You have yeah. those long yeah. wires that anchor into the ground. And on a tower the size of ours, I think ours is 1,750 foot tall. Yeah. The guy wires go out for like a half a mile. Like, so they're far. And it's a you know, big piece of cable. And uh, they hit it. And the way it was described to me is the rotor hit it and it flipped the fuselage around and cut the fuselage in half. And there were no survivors. Sadly. Yeah. And uh, the crazy thing, like, I guess it's not that crazy. So military, well, Military personnel in rented vehicles were on our on site at our transmitter site before any of us could get there, and we were the, you know we were hauling ass to get there our our guys. But that's how yeah, you know, that's how quick they responded to. The incident. There you go. There's a story. Another uh, one. Very slow. Very boring. I'll probably cut it out. Why? Um, Tell about the bees. Oh, uh, no. Nah, let's save that. Save all your best material. Save some of your best material forever. You can let it all go at once. I'm probably about to stop recording. Why? Here, yeah, in a little bit. Well, because the video, you know, let's see. We've been recording for 30 minutes. Already. Really? Already? Yeah. And, uh. Oh, let's take a how long are Jog Reagan's, uh... What? How long are Jog Reagan's... Jog Reagan? Reagan? What? Ra Ra Reagan's. Jog Reagan's. What the shit are you saying? <laughs> I don't want to say the name of the podcast we were listening to. Because it's copyright. No, you can say his name. Joe Rogan. Wow. What about him? How long are his? This is three hours. I'm not going to do that. Because I ain't Joe Rogan. Nobody wants to listen to me for three hours. Whoa, look at that, Steven. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Y'all can't see, but this water's just rushing over the road. Give me your phone. Off the road. Oh, take well, it. You're, you can't. That ain't the way we're going to No, it's not. Holy crap. Holy crap. Oh. So, what, oh, 
So gut signaling was, I think, a three amp this point. Uh, this one, if assuming we get in, which after driving for five hours, I hope to hell we get in. Um, there is our was where it's I think it's one trophy buck and one antlerless. Do you remember what the rules are on a trophy? Yes. A trophy, I don't know, hopefully everybody listening to this has some level of knowledge. Uh, but, but trophy's just kind of a shorthand. It's not saying it's a true trophy. It's just uh, in Texas, I, I don't know if it's all whitetail counties. I don't really know where, I know it's most whitetail counties in Texas have an antler restriction where you can kill a buck that's either a spike, which is it has at least one antler that's unbranched. That's just a single point. And then on the other and then the gap you don't shoot. Uh, so if it's a forky you don't shoot it. If it's a small six pointer you don't shoot it. It's gotta be antlers gotta be oh that dude slid off the road. What? The guy that we have done right there. Um, if it's, it's got to be, they say wider than 13 inches, but I guess the way they're reading it, the way it reads in the brochure for this hunt is uh, the antler, tips of the antlers have to be outside the spread of the ears. So when the deer's at full alert and the ears perk up, you know, that's your way of gauging if it's legal or not. Right? And, uh... So am I going to be able to hunt this weekend? Well, that's what the dude just said, said Sunday ought to be. But Sunday's where most of the hunting hours were going to come from anyway. Because we don't even get to start hunting until, like, after noon time tomorrow. We're in the standby, which is, uh, so like if we had tags, we wouldn't need to be there till like 11 to get time in. Knowing you and me, we'd try to get there early anyway. But, uh, so on standby, the way that works is you gotta get there earlier, but you're not gonna get to hunt till later, because they're gonna get all the guys that drew tags position and situated and da 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 before they start dealing with us. Right? But we drew tags. We didn't draw tags for this hunt. Though. But they're, according to the email, what they're going to do is they're going to reset, they're going to give you loyalty points for next year. Hello? Hey, where is River. Right by y'all? Because it's fixing the flood. I don't think it's going to flood there. Too. No, it won't flood us. I was just wondering what, where it was in relation yeah, to that. Yeah, you're just going to be stuck. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know what? Just in case it does, just uh, stick your head in my office and look where those uh, life jackets are. <laughs> okay. I am hell. It's, I don't know what else I can tell you. Yeah. I just. You yeah. know, I don't think it's coming that far up the hill. Yeah, I don't. I'm. I'm pretty sure we're good where we are, but I just saw it. Uh, the Liberty Hill Independent posted on Facebook that. It, the weather service has posted that there's a shit ton of water headed down the and it's got through the banks and stuff. Um, so I just got off the phone with yeah. the uh, contact at, at the WMA that we're going to. 
And yeah. he said it, it is definitely on for this weekend. So Sunday should be fine for hunting. Uh, tomorrow might be might suck, but the, uh, Sunday we ought to be good. So might have to go awesome. sit in the rain for two nights, but. Yeah, we'd have to get checked in middle of the day tomorrow and do the orientation and all that good crap. Uh, but, so we're looking good except that we're still not even to Waco. Oh, it's bad. Is the traffic that bad? Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. We stopped it. It was like 35. Uh, Let's see, when, I think when, we, when I got past Gerald, it was like 35 was the fastest I got all the way to uh, Temple, then it was like 0 and 10 at Temple. Hey, what are you doing? And you need out of your underwear. <laughs> we, stopped, we stopped at Bucky's in Temple, got some awesome. kind of disgusting food. Yep. It wasn't bad, though. Well, the hot dog was gross. Yeah. They, they put, put a, a hot dog in a burrito. Yeah, they put a hot dog in the middle of our burrito. Yeah, and I don't have a nose anymore. Why? Did you make them angry? Uh, no, apparently there's like this selection. They, uh, I didn't <laughs> understand what it was because it's like a, you're ordering on a touch panel. Yeah. And Stupid. it said... Uh, add a dog but the way it was worded I thought it was just this counts as a hot dog purchase and you're buying two right one for me and one for Peckerhead <laughs> that's the word but apparently add a dog is actually what it sounds like for once and it means they're gonna add throw a meat dick in the middle of your damn burrito <laughs> And so, some 18-wheeler driver got to watch, like, a John Wayne Bobbitt-looking scene of a hot dog getting flung across three lanes of traffic out my passenger side window. Cool. So, exciting trip already. The girl's going to talk to you. Of course. Oh, Mom. Hi, baby. Mom. Tristan. You, you're terrible at talking on the phone. Hello, which girl is this? It's hard to hear. It's both of them. Hi, babies. Little Jay says hello, too. What? Little Jay says hello, too. Little Jay says hello? Little Jay. Letter J. The letter J. And the guy the letter J. Very cool. It's not FaceTime. Stop showing him face. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah? What did everybody think your Halloween costume? Yeah. What? Congrats. I don't know what that means. Thank you, Sam. Both of you. Yeah. What? What did everybody think of your Halloween costume? Did they think you were cute? Yeah. Why, are, why are kids so terrible at talking on the phone? I think of it as like the most ergonomic invention ever, but obviously I'm very, very wrong. Yeah, and I'm Pittsburgh. I don't know. Hi, Jojo. Oh, wow. I don't know. All right, this is fun, but yeah, it's not her. fun. <laughs> what? All right. Bye, babies. Bye, I love you.
<laughs> After a while, crocodile. And another cliche. Oh, that was fun. Yep. So, what are your hopes for this weekend? Kill a deer. Kill a deer. Um, I think you have hogs, too. Kill a hog and a deer? Um. They let us? So, oh, we're of course. We're reaching 30. Oh, of course, the dream would be for you to be doing this hunt with what? A bow. And why are we not doing this hunt with a bow? Because they said we couldn't? No. We've talked about this. Because I'm not pulling an average yet? Stop that. Okay. Exactly. Because somebody's a wussy girl. I'm not a wussy girl. Except that that's not true, because your sisters could probably do it. Ooh. I could pull, Ooh. I can pull 30 pounds. You can pull 30 pounds? I did it. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. You were a one uh, sack No. People <laughs> on the internet. The fat man is a liar. Why are you lying? I'm not lying. That's like a <laughs> commandment, dude. Oh, your teeth are so gross. Did you brush them? Yes. Are you lying to the internet? No. <laughs> Alright. Ow, my arm. Yeah, I'll break your arm. All okay, right. by the way, peoples. Quit touching the gear. Uh, I was going to say something about that. Well, hopefully it'll be called steady. But that could very easily cause popping. We're going to need to change batteries in this deal at some point. Alright, so I'm saying let's close it down for now. And just keep rolling up the highway at a very slow pace. Yep. And if we think something interesting, we'll hit record again. Yep. Alright. See y'all. See y'all next time. Alright, here we go. So, it is Sunday. Whatever, apparently my phone doesn't have a date on it. On the page. Um, Either your phone It is Sunday after the hunt. Where are your clock? Where are the clocks on? Huh? Oh shit, it's only 5 o'clock. That's right. Because it was daylight savings last night, so I gotta change that clock. My phone automatically updates. That does not. Cool. So, yeah. So, it is Sunday. The hunt on, uh, what was the name of that place? Oak something. White Oak, Oak. Creek wildlife management area ended uh, today. Uh, we, If we were still there, we honestly, we could have been still hunting. Part of me wishes we would have stayed, but yeah, we were dead tired. We yeah. ended up getting there. So the drive Friday, when we did the first half of this, pot, this uh, episode, uh, should have been so Google said it was a five hour drive. Usually I make it quite a bit quicker than Google it says it'll take. But with the historic storms and all that good crap, it took nine hours. It took nine freaking hours for us to get from my driveway to the wildlife management area. Yep. So it was nine o'clock at night. It was dark. Couldn't see crap. Couldn't tell where the campground was. So we slept in the truck. And it sucks. Yeah. How much sleep do you think you got? About four hours. Four hours. That's about 
two and a half hours less than me, so, or no. more than me, sorry. So, uh, yeah, no, and I'm saying you're wrong. I think you got less than that as well. Yeah, I got more like... Less than Walmart we stopped at the other night. Where's the Grandies we talked about the other night? Uh, oh, memories. No. From less than 48 hours ago. Yeah. Uh, nice. Really have That's right at 48 hours ago. <gasps> All 47 hours ago. Um, so anyway, so here's the thing. Don't forget the to change your clocks. Personnel at White Oak Creek Wildlife Management Area in Northeast Texas yes. could not be nicer. Yes. They were just about some of the coolest people on the planet. Yes. I don't normally think of people in state regulatory capacities as being, you know, not assholes, but these guys could not have been further away from being assholes. We're about They're to go on so the bridge! Yeah, well, we're uh, Ray Hubbard. Lake Ray Hubbard. Where the catfish smells... Which I always want to call it L. Ron Hubbard Lake. Where the catfish smells like garbage and they're yellow. According to legend and myth. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, so anyway. There's a boat. So we, I don't remember how much of this we covered in the first half. So we, you drew tags for Gus England. Yes. Which was also in East Texas. Huh? Yes. But that got rained out. Mm-hmm. Due to a ton of flooding. Mm-hmm. Um... And so we came to White Oak Creek. Mm-hmm. And we were standby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the guys told us that we would be able to get on because we're they almost never get enough standby guys to they said they ne- have never had to turn anybody away who was on standby, which is awesome. And that's what it ended up being. Uh, said there was more standby guys uh, this hunt than they had ever had before, and they still got everybody on. With room. they had to shut down two of the their uh, what was there, 18 units. Yeah. There's 18 hunt units. There's 16. It's White Oak Creek is 27,000 acre area all together. It's big. And they divide that into 18 units. And it's divided according to physical limitations, roads and rivers and creeks and draws and da 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 da. And uh, I would like to blame their maps. Anyway, I guess start at the beginning. So we sleep in the truck. Pull up next to another guy and his son, and they're sleeping in their trucks. And I knew I was at the right place. Uh, but um, like when they called, the guy had mentioned like a pole barn and stuff, and I couldn't see none of that crap. But I mean, it's a dark. And they don't have any lights on the back part of the place. Of the like right behind the office. Yeah. That's where all that is. And then so. It was a lot of staring into the darkness, playing on my phone, and watching my battery die. And pretending to sleep when I wasn't. Yeah. You were too. Woke up, woke up, uh, got up, decided to not be in the truck anymore. Right after light. Yeah. First light. Uh, talked to the other guy and his kid, well, the guy, the kid didn't really say much for a minute. You know, they're, they're super nice. Uh, they were out of Houston. They were drawn for it. <coughs> um, I think we were the only standby hunters that were from far away. Yeah. I think all the other standbys were local people. Yeah. Which makes sense. Um, and I mean, we, the only reason we drove this far was we had already set the weekend aside. I don't know. Um, <sighs> gotta make sure I don't miss my turn. Uh-huh. So, Alta. 
Hot Coral, he's doing that. Um, well, didn't see much. We saw a pack of hogs, I well, guess. Well, you want to talk about the draw? Oh, all that. well. The orientation. Well, we got 16. Oh, well, they don't know what 16 is. Out of the 18. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it, I guess. Um, the draw. And we got this. So, if you're... I don't know what happens if you're drawn to the tags. I guess there's already an order. I don't yeah. know if they have them draw out of a hat to see who picked. And order, but you get to pick. They have a map of the units, and it's got. And they have, they have a, just a regular map, and then, uh, and then they have a topo map next to it. But you know, the topo maps are seven years old. So, but you know, there's just enough signals where you can look at her on your phone. Uh -huh. But you get to pick, and. Uh, in a way, so obviously if you know the place and you've done your research, then first choice should get you the best unit. Um, a lot of the, it didn't really seem like, a lot of them, I don't know if they just, they were all oh, like, I didn't meet a single bad a single person in there that I, I didn't feel I could hold a conversation with and walk away feeling good about it. And they were all so nice. Every single person. Drawn the hunters, the uh, personnel on site, everybody. Just incredibly
So, all right. So 18 was our first choice. Or 17. 18. 17. And uh, it got, it was, well, okay. So they went through all the people to draw that were actually drawn first. They got to pick their spots. Uh -huh. And there ended up being five standby, and we ended up being, or six, six, five or six? Six. Six. Oh, yeah, we were the fifth to draw, yeah. Yeah. We were the second to last person, people to draw, period. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kept watching, and 17 and 18 were a couple of the last ones picked, but they were picked right before it was our turn. So they came up, <coughs> the guy came up with the map and he had all the units scratched off that had already been chosen. <coughs> so 17 and 18 were gone, but 16 was our next choice and it was open. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of funny how sometimes you can see stuff in the moment. Split second to make because I want to say 16 was actually like fourth on our list, and I think I skipped over our third because I'm sitting there looking at 16 just looks way better. And I mean, I am saying 16 is probably the best or one of the best units there. <clears throat> we just a lot of it's our doing, a lot of it's somebody not being as quiet as they should be. A lot of it's uh, somebody that kept getting impatient. Because I can walk fast and quiet. Somebody else gets tired and doesn't like having a hole ripped in his dick hole in his pants. And I also don't get it like getting whacked by a shooting stick, Steven. I never actually hit you. Yeah, you did. I should not be. No, I didn't. You clipped the back of my leg very hard. When? when you were full of it. all the shit. No, you really, like the very edge of it hit me right when? here. When? When you went like that. No, I didn't right even there. touch you. Yeah, you did. No, I was there. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Happened. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you're about to walk home. Uh, uh, but he tried to hit me with the shooting yeah, stick. Walk home tied to the truck. <laughs> Be like skiing. Cheddar Scratch Kitchen. I guess they're changing their brand. They give you scratch. Uh, like a scratch book. That's a nice way of putting it. And sorry, well, okay. So the guy showed us the way to go. Cool thing, like I really wish we would have gotten a deer anyway, but I would have loved to have seen how it actually worked. Cause with it being a state hunt, state land hunt, they had to take brain samples and lymph nodes. They take the lymph nodes and the brain samples to test for chronic wasting disease. Because it did show up in Texas, but it showed up in whitetail breeding pens, which I don't even really know what a whitetail breeding pen, what all that entails. What, I don't know if that's just the high fence idiots. It's the high fence people. Is it? Is that what they were saying? Yeah. My, uh... They didn't, like, a Texas Parks and Wildlife tester or, or something? I don't think so, because my friend, uh, his grandpa owns a, uh... Talk louder. My friend's grandpa owns a, uh... Put some cojones in your voice, puto. My friend's grandpa... My friend's grandpa's place, he owns a high fence place, and he has a breeding pen. Really? Where he puts, uh, he tries to put the, his best deer yeah. in there. Yeah, he uses so one book. Weird but, to me. He uses one book that um, is like super untypical. Non typical? Uh, yeah, non typical. And um, he, um, uh, um, brought it with this. Uh, nice little doll and 
it was all draped up. Yeah, there's some freaky genetics that come out of those stupid places. Like, um, it, it, they, when he grew up, the, he, the, the fawn, when he mm -hmm. grew up, he had, like, a spike on one head and, like, my friend said he had, like, three, four points on the other. Mm -hmm. Like, two. Yeah, it wasn't, four. like, a spike on a fork. It was a spike and almost a trophy. Yeah. Like, half a trophy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's, yeah, like I say, they throw some weird genetics when you... They said it was the... Pin them up in a deer concentration camp. Except... The it's like, I don't know, that's what the problem... Hyphen something is like... And everything that's cool about whitetail... Let's take that and just throw it away. Yep. It's like one of Put the things head. about whitetail is that they're not cattle. Oh, well, let's take that away from them. Make them cattle. Mm -hmm. Let's breed them to be slow and stupid. Let's breed them to be used to humans and just every once in a while get harvested like a pig that your kid raised for 4-H. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. And then all that would, I don't, like, I don't see anything morally wrong with that. The morally wrong part is when you call that hunting. Yeah. I, get, I mean, there probably, there's a part inside me, I can't make an argument that there's something morally wrong with harvesting livestock. There's certainly something inside my heart, I guess, let's pretend I have a heart. That tells me white-tailed deer should be wild. Yeah, like I was about to say, I could, can't make an argument uh, about saying there's nothing really wrong in uh, white-tailed deer being farmed. I was a big, I was about to be like, I can. Yeah, but it's just, but that's just something I feel. That's not really. I'm not gonna write a textbook about how. You know, Texas Parks and Wildlife should definitely say you can't farm deer. Now, it is not normal. Um, you know, it's obviously it's normal to ranch livestock, but it is not normal to ranch species that are considered uh, wild. Yeah, and like my uh, friend. And his grandpa, the one that owns the Huffins Ranch. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he Sorry. said he, he called, he called himself a big hunter. Like, big. And he just hunts my own what? Yeah, that's the only place he hunts. He's never actually been out in the woods. Yeah. Ain't it, on it? Well, okay. Let's get off of that. So back to our hunt this weekend. Yeah. So we ended up picking 16. Yep. We, but I, when we were driving there, I screwed up and miscounted the number of gates we had passed. Yep. And ended up walking into 15, but we didn't realize it until we walked out. Yep. So we hunted 15, and part of me, which is, thinks we should have just stayed there. Yeah. Because it turned out nobody had drawn 15 and they wouldn't have, didn't care if we would have stayed hunting that both days. And it's a good place. But the idea was to scout uh, for what, from, it was noon by the time the draw and the go, oh yeah, that's how we got talking about the damn high fence. Uh, in the orientation, they, they give you, well, you get, when you pick your unit they give you these two tags which are different than your normal tags that come with your license. They're metal. Yeah, yeah they metal. It's like a oh. band and you're supposed to like either wrap it around an antler if you got a trophy or stab it through their ear but it like turns around and it, make, and it, it locks. It's kind of like a metal version of those bracelets you get in like Slitterbond or whatever. And, uh, 
And then they also give you this big plastic bag with a smaller plastic bag that has a card and a pencil and a pair of latex gloves in it. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's weird. And our whole plan, or part of our plan of when you get your first deer was... Eat the heart. Eat, to eat the heart. We saw it on Steve Renault. It looked really tasty. And we, I think we both regret not eating that heart off that doe we killed last year. Yes. And, it's your uh, fault. It's my fault. 100% my fault. Um, I even asked you if you were the same heart. I, I was there. I remember. But you're stupid. That could be argued. And uh, it I wouldn't argue with you. I'd agree with you. In this instance, especially. Um, but anyway, so it was a little bit disheartening. <laughs> no, nobody did it. No, I probably meant that about 20%. Um, but when they told us that if we put one on the ground, we had to cut its heart out and put it in this bag. And hang it on the wall. Just kidding. I didn't remember. I didn't. I don't remember what he was testing for. That part in there. Uh, uh, some disease. Yeah, it was some guy at UT Austin was testing for some other disease that he needs the hearts for. Yeah. You're looking for. I'd never heard of it before. Whatever that said. Speckled heart it, disease. What? I actually don't know. I just skip silly name. Yeah, I didn't think. Okay. Good enough. If you would have kept going with it, you probably would have convinced me that was it. Well, the way they, they, they said that if it has the disease is that it has like spots on its heart. Like weird little like, looks like it's decaying. Oh yeah. But it's just the disease growing on its heart. Interesting. And so I just came up with the silly name Speckled Heart of Why not? Send an email to that dude at UT and see if he can get it. Rename that. Speckled Heart Disease. Yeah. I'm sure they'll end up calling it Deer Aids or some shit. Anyway. Deer Aids. So, we couldn't have kept them. I think if we would have killed two, I think you could keep one. We hope. Yeah, well, they only gave us one bag, so I'm assuming that's the case. Yeah. And then, uh, but we didn't get to do that anyway. Yeah. So we hunted 15 on Saturday. Find a good place to hunt, but we just decided yeah. to move. Yeah. And we went into the marsh. Well, we were in the marsh in 15. Like, it was hot. It was wet. Mosquitoes were everywhere. Like, yeah. Or like, we, well, the, okay, I see what you're saying. You're talking about moving off that hilltop. So we found this really awesome hilltop that... That was the other thing. So the wind was going east to west all morning. So I picked that unit because it'd be the way you'd be entering, you'd be walking east. Well, let's see how this goes. What's up? Hey, uh, I can cook that shit now. I figured it out. Yeah, that looked good on that picture you sent. So what cuts yeah, was that? That was backstrap. Both of them were backstrap? Yeah, I, yeah, both backstrap. That's what you might have thought for. Where'd y'all get it from? Uh, he got it from the little half your head off. It was, it was a bus. It got both the tip of the penis and all the way to the rim. Oh, nice. And so, you know, how do you want to split? I said, sure. He goes, uh, there's a guy in town, uh, the mall of it, uh, he says he'll, uh, the quarter for twenty bucks. Oh yeah, I said, "What's good? I'll give you twenty. Uh, I'll give you ten bucks on it." Yeah. So it's cool. We went we went and we cut out the backstrap, the line, and we ground it and and two of those. Yeah. And then, and then the rest are ground up. And I have I have half of it. You ground up with the bacon in, one and one, and the other half is just straight venison. All right. This, uh, this deer was uh, and he put it down, and then he. Uh, he took it in the center of the for three days. The center of the one day, it went on the for two days. Yeah. And it was cool. It's not, it's not any whatsoever. 
Hey, uh, you're you're being recorded right now on my podcast. Yeah. Hey, what? Me and Tristan were recording our podcast when you called, so I figured, and I knew, and it's about it's we're starting a podcast about hunting. This is oh, like cool. the first episode. Yeah. We're, we're recording it in the truck coming back from that hunt in East Texas. That's okay, cool. And. Uh, and I knew you were calling to talk about your deer meat, so I figured, well, hell, that'd be a good thing to throw on the hey, podcast. I'm down there. Well, I need yeah, to I talk to your brother at some point if I keep going with this thing. You can, uh, his brother was on one. Um. It's our, it's our James Ferguson. James? Yeah, it's like James Michael. Oh. The other one I name. Yeah. What the hell is that all about? Like, you have a reason. You just, they didn't want to call you the same name as your dad. But. They just kind of, the whole thing, like, it's kind of stuck out that way. Yeah, they're just, it's going to be tradition to give them the first name that we hate and the second name that we'll actually call them by. I don't know what's going to be that Y'all are goofballs. Yeah. Uh, James Ferguson, really? Yeah. Sounds like a mm-hmm. serial killer or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so Gus England got rained out. Ah, uh, that's so. Yeah, they got 22 inches of rain the weekend before the hunt. Good creek. And so we ended up on what's called White Oak Creek, WNA, yeah. and we did stand by there. Like, you don't, if you get rained out, you don't get, they don't throw you tags on another place that has open slots. Uh, you're just done. They give you. They said they'll give you loyalty points, which I don't. We'll see if that actually holds true. What? Um. If they don't, I'm probably gonna call and holler. But uh. But they might do away with them anyway, just because we drew them other two hunts. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That's well, pretty cool about that stuff. So. Uh, but so we got to, so it's like, it's, so it's five hours of driving, except that, uh, it ended up being nine hours for us because all the weather Friday. Yeah, I know. And, uh, so that sucked. But Ooh. every single person on that, uh, that worked there were just the nicest people. Really? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's, I've run into, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just my bias against, uh... Humanity. I just, well, yeah, I'm not game wardens, I guess, but just officials, like, I think people that work in state agencies are usually assholes, but Texas right. Parks and Wildlife... It almost so, all like people that work there want to work there. No, they have dream jobs here. They're outside working. Yeah. Doing a wildlife. It's a dream job. Why would you want to screw that up? That's what I was telling Tristan. Like, these guys working there, I don't know what they're... They're not game wardens. I don't really know what their job title is. But they were just yeah, they're they're nice as could be. They all were just so into... Could not be more into wanting the kids to have a good time. You know, mm-hmm. they were just like, you know, uh, you know, I can't, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, even I called James Daughtry, which is a South Texas unit, yeah. um, which we, Tristan drew tags for there for two weekends from now. Yeah. And I called that guy. And I was like, hey, my kid drew for Gus England, but it got rained out. So we got married. He's like, well, that's not really, we're not having a hunt this weekend, and that's kind of against the rules. We don't let anybody come on here when there's not a, uh, when they ain't drawn for a hunt. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and there's not them when there's not a hunt going on, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but it's funny because I told him the thing about Tristan being drawn and rained out. And I mean, it's just this old gruff, country ass dude. And he, and the first, and with zero irony in his voice, he said, "Oh, poor baby." Oh hell! Like he just felt bad. He knew he's like, 
he knows how much these kids want to do these hunts. And he's like, man, I really wish I could help you. Just He said, try calling one of the ones that does and see if they have, uh, that does have a hunt and see if they have a standby, which I already had kind of planned, but he told me that. And so that's when I called White Oak Creek and figured out they were going to have enough spots and all that good stuff. I'm telling you, Yoda, when your kids get older, you should sign up for these because it's cool because you get to hunt in an environment that's not what you're used to. So, you know, we're used to, you know, Central Texas. There's too many junipers. There's, you know, mesquite trees. There's blah, blah, blah. We come over here and hunt this, and there's tall pine trees. There's tall oh, trees. Yeah. Where that play there? It's the closest towns are called Omaha and Naples, which I ain't never heard of either one of them. That is way out the blue Yeah, it is. Where's it's almost to Texas Camp. Northeast, so almost to Texas Camp. Yeah, Northeast Texas. Yeah, yeah. Like. Michael was in Texas. Who got that record spot? That wouldn't surprise me because they have the size, just not the numbers. Yeah, I mean, he's a good one. He's a good one. Yeah. 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 Uh, I have an idea. I have an idea for a, a hog, like a feeder for a hog, but he's ready to go have that had to work for it. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I don't think it's anything, but you, you put a couple of holes just enough to move it up, and have to root it up. We had to take a note and throw the barrel around. And uh, you, you put a chain on it. So I bought the chain and put it on the key post where it seems to get on off of it. And they used to come down there. This is to take your pork, you know, and you don't want to shoot. All right, well, it's recorded on my podcast now, so if anybody tries to steal your design, you can sue them. No, I got a few of these. all good. That works, too. So, oh, well, that's, all right, so that's what ended up, so we never saw any deer the whole time. I guess, uh, there's, somebody got a buck, there's a, as far as I know, there's only one deer. We left a little bit early, and there's more right. people still hunting. But at the time we left, there had only been one buck out of 15 groups, I guess, that were hunting. Uh, There's only one deer that had been shot, period. And, uh, well, we never saw any deer, but so this morning we were hunting what's called Unit 16. And we jumped a hog. I mean, I was, what, 10 feet away from it? And it was just like bedded down behind this log. And I didn't, I was like bitching at Tristan about making too much noise. And all of a sudden I hear something moving and it's big and it's close. And I look and there's probably a 70, 80 pound hog hauling yeah. ass away. And I was like, oh, that ruined our whole hunt. But it was actually a big unit. So I was like, yeah, no big deal. I'll just run and we'll go hunt over in this other area and find some deer. And then we walked, I don't know, 30 yards, not even. No, not even. Down like, this fence line. And I'm like, man, that sound, that pig, like, I was, I was hearing squealing. I was like, I thought he would have run off further than that. Like, that sounds close. And all of a sudden I look over and I'm like, oh, man, he's right there. Oh, and he's got seven friends with him. Oh. Yeah, so I was like, huh, we may die. <laughs> But they, I would look, and they were on to something, I don't know if it's snakes or what, but they did not give the slightest shit about us. So I, we both undid our knives. Yeah. So we both undid our knives. Yeah, we pulled our knives like we're about to do some hardcore pig sticking. (laughs) Yeah, well, I've seen that Tim Wells guy do it. Yeah, he's crazy, man. Yeah, that dude's nuts. That guy's that dude with dogs, man. I walked up behind him, picked the meat, legs up, and put the legs. 
I saw uh, this one guy does in New Zealand. I saw him do some hog dogging, and he's got. It's funny because here you do it. They're not. They're not pit bulls, but they look like pit bulls. I can't remember what the breed's called, but that's what a lot of people do hog dogging with in the U.S. But in New Zealand, it's like he had that breed, tried that. This guy, this guy, anyways, not all of them. But this guy had that breed, did that for X amount of years, decided they weren't fast enough, and he interbred them with whippets. So basically, they look like a super sinewy, athletic pit bull, like thinner, like a track runner pit bull. And he's got the GPS collars and all that crap on him. Uh, and because he said before he had GPS collars, he used to just he would run another dog with them and made noise because they are trained to not make noise until they kill or until they corner a hog. They don't kill the hog. And so the way he does it though is it's just you and a knife when you when they start making noise, you go find, go to them, get the. And you basically wrestle the hog until you can stab your knife in directly into its heart through its breastplate. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that that is hardcore right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. 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 Fun. Yeah. 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 Well, well, we were telling our story, and then we got mixed up with other things. The hog, well, we found these hogs, they were in Unit 16, and we unsheathed their, we're not This is on Sunday morning after yeah. a worse than unsuccessful day on Saturday on 15, where we didn't even hardly find any signs. Yeah. And so, we unbuckle our knives, getting ready to stick a pig, as he said it, and um, I, shoot, I shoot the pig, and he, they all scatter, um, none of us charges, hopefully, thankfully, and um, I don't, I'm so stupid for not taking a pistol. I just, the way they were talking, I didn't think there was any chance we would see a hog, you know? Yeah. And, um. Uh, Let alone seven or eight. six or seven or eight or how many there was. And I took the shot. wasn't a good shot. And he stumbled away a little I think bit. the shot was fine considering the situation. And it's a hog. So I'm going to be a lot more forgiving. And I know you're the same way. I would not be in a perfect shot. Because the most important thing about hunting a hog is you put lead in it. Mm -hmm. It'd be better if it was dead because it's a hog and they... I'm of the opinion that they all need to be dead and gone. Uh, feral hogs. Yeah. Um... There's not a lot of species on Earth. Well, and I'm not saying the total species watch just the feral, feral North American feral hogs, but they'll never be all gone because there's always going to be pig farmers that lose pigs or business takes a dive and they turn them loose or blah, 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 whatever. And also, I mean, especially in Texas. Hog hunting is such a huge business. It's it's just a ridiculously big business. And so you're not gonna talk them into it. They're not gonna people like that, those interests are never gonna sign up sign on to a total eradication policy for wild hogs. They should. 
be any better. For I don't think helicopter in anything is fair, except hogs. Well, I think it's, yeah, because who cares about fair with hogs? It's not hunting. That's my thing with it. It's just like the high five. Don't call it hunting. Yeah. Call it eradication. Call it exterminating. Exterminating. Yeah. Call it something like that. That's fine. My other problem with helicopter hunting is it does a really terrible job of getting them dead. And and honestly, a lot of those helicopter hunts, I think, are those wall those trapped hogs that they like bring city folks in and them good and play make pretend that it's a wild an actual wild hog but really they just trap the hog and turn it loose uh, it's a friend of mine did that uh, good kid he uh, he wanted to try hog but he's from the city from austin grew up in austin and uh, didn't really grow up around guns or anything like that paid for this hog hunt out in Barnett area, I think, and, like, the way he's telling me the story is, like, you know, I shot it, we ate it, tasted fine, tasted good, uh, he said, but it was a little bittersweet, because I guess the truck we were riding in went a little bit too fast, so we got to where we were going to hunt and saw the tail end of the guy turning the pigs loose from a trailer. So that exists in the world, and people call that one. Anyway, so put a bullet in this hog. He bounced away. Somebody was scared to take a second shot. But I, I know. I understand. I'm going to give you a hard time about it. I couldn't see it. I, I know. But I'm still going to give you a hard time. You tell all those guys on TV not to make those shots with... I'm, I'm, it, it. I'm not actually telling you to make that shot. I'm just giving you a hard time. Next you time you make a bad shot, I'm going to give you a hard time. Yeah. You'll have plenty of chances, I'm sure. Until you don't have a life. Yeah. Um, you have a neck knife in your throat. Yeah. When that happens. Anyway, so shoot the hog. It goes... To, it went down. Did you see that? Like it went down originally. It's like that cliche story that I've heard always about hogs and I've never actually seen. He got hit in the head, just not in the brain box, obviously. It went down, all the other ones scattered. Some went west, some went east. Uh, the ones I almost, that almost, they almost stopped. Something could have got done about the little one, but they got across a prime again. Anyway, so I think the first one's down, and then we look and it stands up. And that's when the opportunity for the second shot never really panned out. And then all of a sudden it's behind all these trees and it's behind this rise. And they're like crap. And so by that time, our knives had been put up because you pulled the rifle out. Blah, blah, blah. I still had my knife up buckled. Did you? Yeah. It yeah. wasn't until we were like, we saw all the blood. Well, and that's like, when I pulled my knife and you had the rifle and we went into the woods. <clears throat> and we found the blood at the head spot and you found blood about yards uh, west of where it was hit, mm -hmm. which is right behind the first big tree yep. that we couldn't see it anymore. And uh, that's it. I mean, we searched for the better part of an hour, probably over an hour the first time. Yep. And then decided, oh, I'm not wasting my day on this hog. Alright. So we go to the place we'd intended to set up for deer hunting. But before that... Oh, well, on the way. Oh, 
on the way. What are you talking about? Okay. We were walking and Stephen found um We're gonna have to talk about that. Some poo. Hog poo. And then we saw a water moccasin right next to it. Yeah. Which you had just walked past without seeing. How close? Very close. Yeah, like three feet. More or less. And it was coiled up inside this little piece of bramble. So I don't know if it was... I don't know. That's weird. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if enough about water boxes. I'm not going to play like a
So there you go. Long, sad story. But, where were we? Hunting. Exactly. We're camping in the woods. Oh, that was cool, cooking that dinner Saturday night. Was cool. Yeah. We had these uh, small potatoes. It's like, if you've ever grown potatoes, uh, sorry, I whacked the camera. Chasing mosquitoes. Tons of mosquitoes in East Texas. I'm pretty sure that's where they come from as a species. Well, malaria is grown. Uh, grown on pigs. I'm going to eat up with mosquitoes. Mosquitoes don't hit me at all. Yeah. And the woods in East Texas is a different story. It, it's weird. It's like at home, I'm usually eating them. Oh, and the tent worked out well. We need to yeah. talk about that. Um, and, and you are the usually are fine. When it's yeah. East Texas, I was fine. I only got bit like twice. Yeah. You were bit like 50 Yeah, times. they were just killing me. I don't know what to deal with. They were just annoying me. Yeah. 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 I don't know. And, uh, okay, so yeah. So, high points, obviously. It's more fun to be not shooting anything in the woods than it is to be not shooting anything sitting at home or well, shooting things and then running away. Well, yeah. And being in the woods. Yeah, obviously it would have been much better if we would have produced, but. Produced? Yeah. I blame you for all failures. Okay. And, uh. single human person we met this weekend was extremely nice. We met some non-human people. Yeah. That was nice. Uh, you saw us cook. I saw us cook. Uh, it, stuck. it was about 100 yards away and never came any closer. Yep. Perfect way to see a skunk. Uh -huh. If you got to see one. I and, almost, uh, I, I wanted to shoot him. I mean, I'm so glad you didn't. And then, you told uh, me to. Well, then I told you not to. I still wanted to shoot someone. I had like right. adrenaline going through me from yeah. shoot, shooting the pig. We were looking for the pig. Right. I was going to charge my pig. Yeah. I wanted to shoot somebody else. We saw a skunk. Something to shoot. I wanted to shoot it, but I didn't. And then the tent. So that was our first. We had done a test set up on our tent. It's this little. It's a single man backpacking tent. Except that. Honestly, for one guy, it's a ton of room. Yeah. Um, so, that's why we got it. Was It's backpacking to it. Because all this is for the goal of being ready for elk hunting. Yep. And that's a good tip for it, I think. We, you know, because of the rain, I took a tarp and we made a makeshift like, rain fly over the tent. And then as soon as we put that up, it stopped raining. It never really rained again. Yep. Stayed damp. But so we made a campfire Saturday night. Uh, one of the guys, the Texas Parks and Wildlife guys, they had a fire going. And I asked him if it was cool if we made our own fire. And he's like, yeah. And then we're digging a hole to kind of, for a base for ours. And... Him and his wife are both there, and all of a sudden they're walking over with some uh, embers off of their fire to get us started. It was really awesome. And I burnt my hand. You burnt your hand because you're apparently really stupid as a human I'm being. not stupid. I thought it was a sticker. I keep telling you that. Uh, and I burnt my hand good. Yeah. 
So you were like scared to take the sticker out, I guess? No, I was okay. like, oh, it's just a sticker. Yeah. Really? And then I was like, it's a hot sticker. Yeah, it's pretty warm, that it's... sticker. <laughs> ow! Ow! Hot as a fire. That sticker that's two inches from a fire is so hot, it's almost like a fire. That really hurts. Ow! Now yeah, you got the gross bubble in here. Yeah. In between your pinky and your Wait pinky. for it to explode. Yeah, that'll be gross. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So, that. Yep. So, we, we cooked over that. We used our mess kit. The mess kit worked awesome. It's a large McDonald's. We it's fried. Yeah. We put some olive oil in there. We fried. That was pretty funny. We had these, like, fancy... Apples. Uh, organic blah 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 potatoes Apple. and then put a package of shitty taco meat that's probably from god knows what animal a skunk and uh it's probably the meat that's not good enough to eat dog food or cat food the wet cat food yeah and but mix it all up <laughs> ate it that's all the pepper good. makes everything awesome it was pretty darn good <laughs> And yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Uh, and then of course, Cliff Bars for breakfast. Dessert. We made hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Oh yeah, we had the dried fruit for dessert. Oh yeah. That was good. Yeah, that was really yeah. good. Yeah, but yeah, that was a fun weekend. There, yeah, no doubt about that. Yep. Yeah. But I really have to go pee. Right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's be the name of our podcast. <laughs> Alright, people. We uh, I'm dying. Your laugh is so weird. I'm not gonna be here next time. But... <laughs> Alright, talk to y'all later. Yeah, bye.